Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to uh, module 4, uh, uh, Python tutorial 4 of this course, Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. In this module, we have, uh, uh, in this tutorial, we have uh, uh, learned how to represent a matrix and then how to get the eigenvalue eigenvectors. And Python has a particular way of presenting eigenvalues and eigenvector, and we have to collect that information specifically. So, we look at it, how to collect it, uh, Python will be clubbed every eigenvalue and eigenvectors in a particular um, uh, arrangement. And if we want to collect it, the way it is presented here is that this particular eigenvalue is corresponding to the first column of this matrix, this, um, uh, this eigenvalue matrix, V matrix. And the second eigenvalue corresponds to the column of this second column of this matrix. So, we will check it how to uh, get that. We will first write down specifically instead of printing E, we will just print E0, the first eigenvalue and, uh, uh, and corresponding V, if we want to uh, corresponding eigenvector if you want to uh, plot uh, print, then it is going to be colon comma 0. So, entire column has to be printed. Similarly, uh, there are two Eigen values we have. So, second Eigen value is going to be, it is going to be 1 because index starting starts from 0 and uh, the corresponding Eigen vector is going to be now 1. That is the way we can pull up the information specifically. And if we run this program, we get following results. Corresponding to the Eigen value 3, I have this Eigen vector 0 0.7, 0 0.7 and this is going to be the row vector, um, uh, column vector actually. So, I will go back to the slide right now. So, corresponding to the eigenvalue 3, I have now this eigenvector, the right normalized eigenvector, right normalized eigenvector is nothing but the uh, a column matrix, column matrix is represented by 0 0.7 by 0 0.7 and corresponding to this eigen value, I have another column matrix which is minus 0 0.7 and 0 0.7. So, this is these are the two uh, uh, matrices we have, uh, the, the eigenvectors we have. And if we, if we compare these two eigenvectors, we will see that the same results we have got. Basically, we represent when you did analytically, we have got uh, the eigenvectors as square root 1 by square root which is nothing but the value which we have got here and another uh, eigenvector was um, minus 1 by square root of 2, 1 by square root of 2 and that is exactly what we have found here. So, numerically we get the same result, only one point to be remembered here is that the way this array has been represented, it looks like a row matrix. This is just a visualization, that is the way Python will print. Python is printing like a row, does not mean that it is a row matrix, it is actually a column matrix, 
we have to remember that. So, it is just a visualization and one can change the visualization by changing certain um, by giving certain command in this construct. We will just skip that because that um, details we do not need immediately. But we will remember that this is just a printing issue of python. The python will print it like this way, but it is actually uh, this this ev this this construct will give me only write normalized eigen vector that we have to remember it is going to be always write normalized eigen vector write normalized eigen vector it is nothing but a, a column matrix like this. So, corresponding to a particular eigenvalue how to get the eigenvector that we have already found and uh, if we have this results then one can actually go ahead and test one can now test the properties of these eigenvectors properties such as uh, we know that if it if I have eigenvectors there are two eigenvectors if I have then inner product with itself because it is normalized it should give me one inner product with the other eigenvector. So, it is going to be orthonormal each vector would be orthonormal. So, if I take the inner product with itself it is going to be one. So, both would be one this one also should be 1, but if I take the inner product with the other vector it is going to be 0 because it is orthogonal to each other. So, let us let us prove that we, we have uh, uh, situations like this and to get the inner product is a very simple way to get the inner product. Inner product can be used with this at the rate sign. This is the vectorial product. So, in general scalar product is used by this star. So, A multiplied by B this is the scalar product, but if I want to take vectorial product it is going to be the inner product is going to be A at the red sign B or A. So, we will take a look at it whether these vectors which we have created already they follow the properties which we are familiar with. They should be orthogonal uh, orthonormal. So, I will be able to take the inner product as follows. I will I have this eigenvector and if I multiply this eigenvector uh, vector product inner product. So, then I can also take the inner product for the other eigenvector and I can take the between two eigenvectors. So, if we do that then I get back following information. I will go back to the slide. Um, I have the first inner product between the these two eigenvector is giving me 1. It is, it is close to 1. So, this is a numerical value and uh, it means that this vector is normalized. On the other hand if I take the other vector inner product that is also normalized and if we take the inner product between two vectors then what I get is 0 which means orthonormal. So, what we are getting is uh, this, this EIG functionality is giving me orthonormal right Eigen vectors corresponding to a particular Eigen value we have proved this one. We will move on and uh, we have already seen the general procedure to construct the matrix. Now, we will move to this tri-diagonal matrix. Tri-diagonal matrix is something which we will be dealing with in the in quantum mechanics very frequently because the kinetic energy part adopts this tri-diagonal form. So, if, we, if it is adopting tri-diagonal form we have to uh, learn how to get that um, um, uh, uh, eigenvalue eigenvector of the tridiagonal matrix. Now, if you look at the tridiagonal matrix 
something is very interesting to note its diagonal elements all diagonal elements are actually 2. Then upper diagonal elements is minus 1 lower diagonal elements is also minus 1. So, instead of 3 by 3 matrix if somebody is asking me to construct let us say 3000 by 3000 matrix two dimensional matrix in that case I have to write down 2 2 2 in the diagonal form minus 1 minus 1 like this way in the upper diagonal form and then minus 1 minus minus 1 in the lower diagonal part also and this needs to be written many many times. So, previously what we have done we have um, manually once we have created the z null matrix we have manually entered the values of the each element we have reassigned the, the values of each element manually. We can automate the process matrix con construction by using a for loop and that is exactly what we are going to learn for a for a, for a um, um, for a matrix of let us say 3 by 3 dimension or 2 by 2 dimension we do, may not need a for loop we can manually enter the uh, re-enter re the, uh, the values of each element. But if you are constructing a large matrix very large matrix then for loop would be would be the only option and one, 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 should make, one should make use of this automated option. So, we will look at it how to uh, automate the process. The, uh, the first step is as usual we will first create the 0 matrix and uh, that, that we will keep it as it is 0 matrix and in this case we will make 3 by 3 matrix because um, uh, our desired matrix is dimension is 3 by 3. So, we will call it zeros 3 by 3 that is the way we will mention and then instead of assigning manually we will assign through uh, automate the assignment process. So, we will write down as for i in a range a range functionality we will use. So, we will import this a range functionality previously we have seen a range functionality can produce um, uh, a list of elements. So, a range 3 this is something which we are using for the first time and I will explain what does it mean by a range 3 previously I will go back to the slide. So, previously we have always used this a range functionality as a a range functionality as start then stop then step. So, it will give me it will so if the a range functional if I am giving this to be 1 then 4 then 1 it will create a list of element like 1 then 2 then 3 and it will stop at 3 because the stop is not included in the list in the sequence that is the way a range functionality works and that is the construct we, we, which we have used before. Uh, it is giving me the list of elements which I need, but there is another very frequently used construct uh, for the uh, a range functionality and that is called a range just write down a range stop. So, what it what it does if I if I do not use 3 um, input for the a range functionality if I use only one input it will be considered to be as stop stop input and then by default it will consider 0, 1 like this and then stop minus 1 because it will exclude stop and it will print up to stop minus 1. So, by default it is taking the step size to be 1 the step 
to be 1 and starting point to be 0. So, that is the that is the default um, uh, input it will take. So, arrange functionality works with both uh, constructs. One construct where we give 3 inputs together where we can control where to start and where to stop and what is the step size. But if I use only arrange functionality with only one input, that one input would be considered to be the stop input. And default, by default it will start from 0 and it will end at stop minus 1 value because always it will exclude the stop value. And that is exactly what we have done here. Uh, if I say uh, arrange, arrange 3, it means I am getting a list of following list 0, 1, 2 following list and arrange 2 I will get list 0, 1, 2 will be excluded. So, these are the list I am getting and this functionality we are going to use right now. So, we have for i in arrange 3 I have to specify now i comma i so, what I am going to do right now, uh, diagonal elements I am specifying and I know that diagonal elements is going to be a i i that is 2 always. Next, I am going to specify off diagonal, upper diagonal and lower diagonal elements i in a range, I am going to use 2 and then a i comma i plus 1 is going to be minus 1 a i plus 1 comma i it is also going to be minus 1. So, upper diagonal elements will be ex, uh, expressed by i i plus 1, lower diagonal elements will be expressed by i plus 1 i and both are both values are 1. So, we will be able to uh, get the um, matrix. We will do one thing after construction, we will just print the matrix to check what we have constructed. So, if we run the program, we get the desired matrix where uh, diagonal elements are 2 upper diagonal elements are minus 1, lower diagonal elements is minus 1. And so, we have constructed the matrix which we want to do. So, what will happen in the first, we will go back to the uh, slide right now. Um, in the first loop, it will collect the value for a 0 0, that is going to be 2. Second loop, it is going to be 1 1, that is going to be 2 and third loop it will collect the value 2 2 that is going to be 2. So, I have first row first column, second row second column, third row third column, third row third column A is given by A 2 2 which is the element 2. So, this is the this is all about this iteration. For this iteration for the first iteration I will have A i value will be taken from a range and you look at this for the first iteration I have set the a range uh, to be 3 which, which means that I have only index value to be i value to be uh, selected from 0, 1, 2 only. So, 3 values are selected and these are the indices which which you have selected from the a range functionality. On the other hand for the next one I have only option 2, 0, 1 and that is why we will write down first one is 0 and then second one is going to be 1 that is going to be minus 1. So, what it, what it does in the first loop I, I, I am re reassigning as minus 1. So, this is going to be uh, the first row second column, first row second column is going to be this one, then second row first column is going to be this one. So, this 2 has been assigned. In the second iteration, the this is the first iteration, second iteration I will have a next number is 1. So, it is going to be 1, 
2 that is going to be minus 1 and 2 1 is going to be minus 1. So, I have these values and these values and then then I do not have any other numbers. So, that is why the for loop will terminate and will go to the next common line. So, for loop will be running for um, uh, 2 iterations here and here for loop will be running for 3 iterations and that is the way we are replacing automating the, uh, the, 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 the construction of the um, of this uh, uh, construction of this matrix. So, we have got back the uh, Python representation of this matrix. Next what we will do? We will just follow the, uh, the usual procedure to find out the eigenvalue eigenvectors of this matrix. Uh, we will just write down E comma V equals the first one would be the first option is going to be eigenvalue, second option is going to be eigenvector which will, can be represented uh, and then A. So, if we do that and then if we print uh, a print e. So, this is this is python will be printing on its own way one can extract each one each eigenvalue and eigenvector uh, following um, the uh, constructs I have already shown. So, if I if I print this two then what I get is that the it has three eigenvalues we will go back to the previous uh, to the slides right now. So, I have now the this is this is one eigenvector uh, sorry eigenvalue then another eigenvalue and then another eigenvalue. So, there are two eigenvalues I have one is this one. So, each one having this complex notation I do not need this complex notation each one is 0 that is why this is one eigenvalue this is another eigenvalue and this is another eigenvalue there is three eigenvalues I have and corresponding eigenvectors are following I have to construct this is one eigenvector then this is right eigenvector corresponding to this and corresponding to this this is another eigenvector. So, there are three eigenvectors I have already found in the uh, and these will be all in grid representation. So, we can directly calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a tridiagonal matrix, but uh, this is uh, not a not a, the, the procedure which I am showing the direct procedure where I am using this um, uh, that I am using making use of the entire matrix. Um, this direct procedure can be useful for uh, the, the lower dimension like let us say 3 by 3 matrix I have in that case it can be very quick. But when we have very large very very large tridiagonal matrix and if you are dealing with very large trigonal matrix um, one can see one can go over this the, the, uh, the elemental um, map of this matrix if we if we carefully go over the elemental map we see that all the elements are actually 0 and only I have this for the tridiagonal matrix I have the diagonal matrix elements which are non-zero and upper and lower diagonal elements are non-zero. So, there are procedure which one can follow to represent the different storage form. One can use a different storage form for this kind of large trigonal matrix to reduce the computational time. So, if you are dealing with very large tridiagonal matrix it is better not to directly use this matrix and find out the eigenvalue and eigenvector with the help of this construct. We, sh we should not do that. We should use some other technique which would be more computationally time, uh, time effective um, if we perform in a different way. So, we will present it how to deal with very large triadrogonal matrix and we will we'll prove that if we directly do that um, calculations instead of doing uh, direct calculation if we do it um, in a in a um, band storage form uh, 
uh, then the computation would be much more efficient and computational time can be um, extraordinarily reduced. So, in quantum mechanics we often work with very large Hermitian matrix of triadagonal form which is shown here um, and, uh, and, and, and a generic structure of the triadagonal matrix shown here. A square matrix possessing non-zero elements only in the main diagonal is called a diagonal matrix. So, if I have a matrix where only diagonal elements having non-zero um, values uh, remaining part is 0 then it is called diagonal matrix. The main diagonal of a matrix consists of elements that lie on the diagonal that run from uh, top left to the bottom right. A tridiagonal matrix which is presented here has non-zero elements on the main diagonal. This is the main diagonal and um, on the upper diagonal, this is upper diagonal and this is lower diagonal um, uh, the part um, and these values would be non-zero in a tridiagonal matrix. So, in a tridiagonal matrix is also called a band diagonal matrix because it is only non-zero element are confined to a diagonal band. So, one can think about a band like this and all non-zero elements have been um, um, confined within this band and that is why it is called also um, band diagonal matrix. Now, in module 4, uh, we have realized that the defining condition of a Hermitian matrix, this is an Hermitian matrix and defining condition of a Her Hermitian matrix is that it is self adjoint. So, if it is an Hermitian matrix, it has to be self adjoint. And self adjoint what does it mean a i j is going to be a j i star and due to this symmetry because it is self adjoint due to this symmetry of Hermitian matrix a tri tridiagonal matrix n by n matrix can be stored as 2 by n 2 by n band storage form. So, this is called band storage form. So, the point I am trying to make here is that instead of dealing with very large triadagonal matrix, one can store the entire triadagonal matrix in its band storage form. And if we do that, then one can see that the actual matrix was n by n, let us say 3000 by 3000, the big matrix that can be stored as 2 by n which is 2 by 3000 let us say. So, the memory which will be used to store the matrix can be um, reduced significantly if we use this band storage form of the tridiagonal matrix. There are two ways one can store the uh, tridiagonal matrix in the band storage form. One is called the upper diagonal elements with the help of upper diagonal elements. Upper diagonal elements, so we know that this is diagonal element and this part is upper diagonal element. So, with the help of only upper diagonal element I can store it and the way I can store it is following. I have 0, then uh, uh, so first would be 0 and then this upper diagonal elements and then uh, the, um, the diagonal elements. On the contrary, one can also store with the help of lower diagonal elements and in that case it is going to be the diagonal elements first and then in the second row we will have the lower diagonal elements with 0 in the end. So, these are the two different uh, representations of band storage form. So, what we get is that we actually store, we are actually storing the, the very large Hermitian tridiagonal matrix 
in the band storage form to reduce the memory consumption for the entire um, uh, when you are dealing with the matrix. And if we do that this band storage form then scipy linear algebra the sub module gives me one very efficient functionality to calculate the eigenvector and eigen values for uh, for this kind of matrix if it is stored in the band storage form. So, and with the help of this. So, it instead of only EIG within bracket I have to use now underscore then banded then bracket. So, so what will the bottom line of the entire uh, discussion is that if I have a very large Hermitian tridiagonal matrix, first thing I, I should do to reduce the memory consumption and to make the computation effective or, or faster, uh, we have to convert this matrix form, uh, this large matrix to a to one of the band storage forms either upper diagonal with the uh, with the help of upper diagonal elements or with the help of lower diagonal elements. Their structures are different, but one can convert it. The moment we convert it we get this 2 by n um, uh, matrix. And then uh, this new matrix I will name it let us say B. So, this was this was A I will call it B and then I can find out the eigenvalue and eigenvector using this construct I, I, EIG underscore banded B. So, we will take a look at it how to do that we will move to uh, uh, the laptop right now and uh, we have already constructed the tridiagonal matrix and this tridiagonal matrix we have constructed. Now, we will construct two cross three band storage form. So, we have to now reconstruct the band storage form and for that what we will do? we will use upper diagonal elements. So, for that what we need to do we have to start with a uh, null matrix of 2 by 3 dimension. So, remaining part this part is not of use we will just keep it as it is. So, this part is to show conventionally how to prepare the large matrix and then directly how to get the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvector we are not following that procedure. So, this entire steps will be obsolete right now we are following another steps. The steps is that by looking at the uh, matrix which we are going to prepare it is clear that it is a tridiagonal Hermitian matrix and that is why we can store it in a band storage form and in order to store the band storage form first we have to prepare the null matrix. So, we will prepare zeros. 2 by 3 and we have named the uh, null matrix at as A band up, up we are showing because we are going to use the upper diagonal elements and then we will automate the procedure for I in a range 2. this matrix this array values has to be specified and this is going to be 0 comma first row and i plus 1 this is going to be minus 1.0 and for 
i in a range 3. I have to now reassign the elements. It is going to be first row and this and that value is going to be 2.0. What we will do? We will now print to see what we are constructing. So, we have constructed the band storage form. And now we run the program. Okay. So, what we have done we are we are we are commanding to print the normal form of the tridiagonal matrix. So, that has been printed here and then with the help of the upper diagonal elements we have printed this. So, that is the band storage form or with the help of upper diagonal elements. So, take a look at it. Let us go back to the previous slide. So, we have shown uh, in the slides. So, what we see here is that if we use the upper diagonal elements, here we are using upper diagonal elements, the first uh, element, the element at the first row first column is going to be 0 and then remaining part is going to be remaining the each element in the different column of the same row it is going to be minus 1 and that is exactly what we have um, commanded here. If you go back to the um, laptop we will see that the for the for this iteration the first iteration the for, for the first loop I have commanded that for the 0th um, uh, row which index 0 means it is a first row for the first row and second column and onwards, first row, second column, first row, third column, first row, fourth column like this way all is going to be minus 1. And uh, how far it should go? It should go up to uh, a range 2 which means that 2 will be excluded. So, I have only 0 and 1. So, it should go up to 1 and 2. So, 3 2 elements I have minus 1 minus 1. On the other hand for the next for loop I have set the row to be 1 which means the second row and for entire column I have to use 2 values and I get this band storage form. So, this is exactly the band storage form with the help of upper diagonal elements. Once we have that band storage form with the upper diagonal elements, one can actually calculate the um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, I will put this to be, we will we'll do both directly we can calculate the eigenvalues of the entire matrix which is here or one can also calculate the eigenvalue eigenvector of the band storage form corresponding to this the matrix A. This is the band storage form and in that case I have to use eigenbanded. This is the construct. So, I have to also import the same const, um, functionality from scipy linear algebra sub module. So, if we run this program, and 
and we have to print it. So, print E, print V, here also we have to print, print we will name different, we will make it E 1, V 1 and this one as E 2, V 2. So, this print would be 1, 1 and this is going to be E 2 and print V 2. So, if we do that, what we get is that Uh, we get the same results actually. If we run, uh, if we if we try to calculate directly the, with the uh, with the help of entire uh, matrix, and if we run the uh, calculations with the band storage form, we see that the same results we are getting. In the band storage form, uh, the values are. 0.58, then second one is 0.2, third one is 3 point something and that is exactly what we get 0.52 and 3.4, these are the 3 um, eigenvectors we get. On the other hand corresponding to 3.4 this eigenvalue I have this eigenvector minus 5, 7, minus 5 and what I get is 5, minus 7, 5. So, this this part, this negative part is coming into the uh, fact that you have this, um, uh, if you multiply each element by minus 1, it is going to give you this values. So, they are the same eigenvector. On the other hand, for corresponding to 2, we have now minus 7, 4 and 7. And here I have 0.5, so for corresponding to 0.5, I have then 5, 7, 5, so I have minus 5, minus 7, minus 5. So, they are representing the same eigenvectors uh, which I have calculated through the band storage form. So, now uh, one may want to use uh, another uh, convention, one can use the, uh, uh, the lower band uh, for the band storage form. So, I will write down lower and if it is lower then this values would be 0 first 0 and then this going to be 1 and this is going to be 2 and second one is the 1i and that is going to be minus 1. and this one going to be 2 and this going to be 3. Now, one can this is going to be lower and if we now print this entire band storage form and here also we print A what we see here now we are actually using the lower diagonal matrix so if we look at if we go back to the slides we see that if we are using the lower um, diagonal elements, then the, the, that is the band storage form we use, then the diagonal elements comes in the first row 
and the second row will be occupying the lower diagonal elements the last value would be 0 and that is exactly what is going on here last value is 0. So, we are getting the uh, getting back the uh, this um, matrix band storage form and one can now calculate the Eigen values and Eigen vectors. by this but in this case because we are using lower uh, uh, diagonal elements we have to by default it is taking the upper diagonal elements but if I specifically want to use lower diagonal elements then I have to make lower to be true then it can calculate otherwise it will not be able to calculate it and then you have to print it print E print V so it is it is giving me the same result 0 0.52, 0 3.4 these are the Eigen values and so I get I get, get back the same Eigen values it depends on what kind of storage um, procedure we are following and if we have a particular procedure to store we will just uh, uh, use it. So, if I if I do not use this lower equals true then I will uh, have some value, but these values are wrong because now it uh, it is not it doesn't know whether I have used a lower uh, uh, band storage form. It is accepting that I'm using upper band storage form, and that's why they have taken it like this way. So it is it is going to be wrong because by default it is going to be upper band storage form. So always we have to use this lower equals true if we are storing it in the in terms of lower di um, diagonal elements then I get the uh, values values 0 0.5 to 3.4 that is exactly what we had previously 0 0.5 to 3.4. One more point uh, to mention here uh, is that this lower equals true this is the boolean um, value. So, it will always start with true like this or false with a capital letter, but this lower is the input or the argument that is going to be the small letter. So, we should we should remember this one um, when you are employing this. So, we have come to end of this uh, uh, python tutorial where we have learned how to represent a matrix. Uh, how to represent a tridiagonal matrix, uh, kinetic energy uh, matrix in grid representation is actually a tridiagonal matrix, Hermitian tridiagonal matrix and when you are dealing with a very large tridiagonal matrix one can uh, use this uh, one of the band storage forms and once you represent in one of the band storage form um, Python linear algebra submodule provides uh, a particular functionality to get the eigenvalue and eigenvectors from this band storage form. We will meet again uh, in next tutorial and modules.